Let's play the game, can you guess what I'm describing? All right, this one item will bring so much joy, fun, and thrill, and excitement to one group of people, and whereas to another group of people, they're filled with fear, anxiety, and almost paralyzed. The faster, the taller, the more dangerous this appears, the more people gravitate toward it. You can find this one thing in almost any amusement park. I'll give you two seconds to guess what it is. You're right, it's the roller coaster. Picture this, everyone's in their car. You've got someone to the left to you, the right of you, behind you, in front of you. Well, unless you're really daring, you're in the very front or the very back cart. We're all going on the rails, then all of a sudden you hear the sound. Some people are so thrilled to hear that, they've been waiting for this moment. You are ascending to the very top of the roller coaster, and you know what's coming next, that plunge. You're screaming, hands in the air. Other people, like me, we have the grip that's so tight because as we are plunging, we can only see ourselves flying out of the safety harness of the ride and going who knows where. Isn't it amazing how some people get off of this ride and willing to stand in a long line just to do it all over again? Whereas other people decide to just sit this out. And maybe that's what some people are experiencing with our housing market. You've decided, I'm just gonna sit this out. Our housing market is like a roller coaster. It's up, it's down, it's left, it's right. That kind of adrenaline rush is not for everyone. This is the part where we pause for our station identification. Hi, I'm Tracy Sorrell with the DFW Life and I help people just like you move in and around our Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. And what I realize is that, you know, moving, that could be the easy part. The idea that you're gonna pack up and go somewhere new. The part that's not so easy is where you decide to live your life once you get here. What I like to do is share the lifestyle of a community. I know that you can, you know, bedrooms and baths, you can find that out online. But what you may not know are some of the things to do, some of the crime rates, and the different things that you find important when you want to call a place home. Hey, if this is your first time to this channel, do me a favor, subscribe below, press the bell, give me a like, and you'll be notified anytime anything is going down around town, around our Dallas, Fort Worth Metroplex. Now, back to the video. But if you're watching this video, here are a couple of things that I know about you that are true. You're intelligent, you're successful, and you like to be in the know of the housing trends, what's going on, the myths, the truths. You like to know and you like to be well informed. And in this video, we're going to attack the anxiety of all that is happening in our housing market. And let's say you're not thinking about moving anytime soon. Chances are you know someone who is. So before you swipe and scroll and go to the next video, hang in there with me because you're gonna get some valuable tips that you can share with the people that you know who may be filled with a little anxiety about moving in our housing market and you can be the hero. And you can also just share the video with them. But we're gonna get started with myth number one, which is the infamous four letter word, rate. Myth number one, wait until the mortgage rates go down. The truth, waiting for the mortgage rate to go down can cost you much more than just the rate. There's so much that the, goes into the Federal Reserve's decision about how the rates should, should be. But one thing I do know is the rate does impact your life. And despite all of the things and the calculations that get us to the rate we have today and we are today, sometimes you're like, I don't even care about all of the details. All I care about is how am I going to overcome the hurdle, the obstacle, the challenge of the race and continue to live my life. And if you feel that way, that's what we're gonna talk about in this section of our myth number one. Let's make this all make sense. Let's first take a look at what the interest rates are doing and how that impacts your ability to afford a home. Looking at this chart, let's take a look at how the interest rates 
impact your purchasing power. Let's say that you've been pre-approved for a home at $440,000. Well, at 6%, you can see that your principal and interest is $2,638. Well, that's a difference between when the interest rate is at 7.75% because now that $2,638 is $3,152. So you're absolutely right at how much this impacts your purchasing power. But there are some ways that we can help you offset the interest rate. We can't change the rate. The rate is the rate, but we can outsmart the rate. So let's say, for example, with the 2-1 buy down, you may be familiar with this. This is when we negotiate with the seller, with the homeowner to help you with your interest rate. So let's say that, you know, the lender said your interest rate is at 7%. And you are able to get the homeowner to help you buy down the rate. Oftentimes we can negotiate a two one buy down. So let's say your interest rate is at 7% and your first year we're able to negotiate that 7% to 5%. The second year we're able to negotiate that 7% to 6%. So hypothetically you're saving, well, no hypothetically, honestly, you're saving a lot of money. Now that third, year, it's going to go back to that 7%. So at that point, you might consider refinancing. So having higher interest rates, you're right, that does impact what you can purchase. And so we'll just negotiate you a lower rate, which gives you more buying power. And even if you decide not to buy more, it gives you breathing room. And in new construction, here's a tip with new construction they are offering fixed rates of two to three percent lower than prime rate so if the prime rate is seven percent there are some cases with new construction they're offering five and four percent interest rate fixed rates so reach out to me and we'll discuss what we can do with the interest rates a bit more but let's get back to our myths myth number two I can get a better deal if I just wait for the prices to go down or maybe even a crash. The truth, what crash? Sellers, homeowners have so much appreciation in their properties that they can just ride this out. Think about it, you've been looking for a home for the past year, maybe two years or more, and you've noticed how the prices keep going up every time. Well, that increase in price is reflective of the appreciation that the homeowners have gained, more equity that they've gained, which means they're not in the position where they are desperate enough to give away their homes, even with the rising interest rates. Two thirds of people who own their homes either own their homes free and clear or have at least 50% of equity in their homes. Now put that into perspective, you know, we don't have the, the rage and the, the excitement in our housing market like we may have had in 2020 or 2021 when people were offering hundreds of thousand dollars over asking price and giving everything, not only the kitchen sink, they were given the firstborn too, just to have a chance to bid on a home. But we are still seeing great appreciation in our housing market. I had a home listed and in six days, in today's market, in today's market, in six days, they were under contract. They had the home sold at a higher price than what we listed it for in some fantastic terms. So I wanted to share that with you so you don't believe that you can enter the marketplace just offering anything because these homeowners have to be so desperate. And that leads me to another point. As you can see, these seven experts, they feel qualified to project what our housing market is going to do, appreciation and depreciation. Of these seven experts combined, on average, they still believe that our housing market will appreciate 3.2% this year. Now that appreciation may be lower than it has been in the past, but are you seeing where I'm going with this? it's still appreciating. So while you're waiting for prices to go down, I'm concerned that you're gonna to wait to the point where you're gonna miss out on the home that you could have. Oh, and if you own a home and you're waiting to sell your home before you move or you know, you're ready to move, you have so much equity in your home that you have a lot of options. You can use that equity to buy your next home with cash 
Or you can use that equity to put such a substantial down payment on your next place that you can move almost anywhere you want to go. Oh, and the last thing as far as affordability and prices has to do with wages. Now, I don't know if this is fact or fiction. I don't know if I can offset this myth with the truth, but according to statistics and someone's research, our wages have increased and somehow houses should be more affordable. I mean, let me show you what I'm talking about. So in the green, that's the wages index. That's when it's projected to keep going and keep rising. We can see in uh, 2021, 2020, we took a dip in our wages. But what they're saying now is that the wages are rising and they projected it would continue to rise above the blue line, which reflects the wages index trend. So they feel like, you know, we're in pretty good shape and we're going to keep rocking and rolling and we're going to be just fine and be able to afford these homes. But what I know that affordability has more than just the housing component. Let's face it, things are expensive. Things are more expensive than they were 15 years ago, two years ago, or even six months ago. When was the last time you've gone to the grocery store? Oh yeah, and you know the fast foods, they've gotten so expensive that now you're forced to go back to the grocery store and start cooking. Myth number three, can't find a home even if you decided to buy one. The truth, there are plenty of homes out there. Yes, the inventory is still a little, well, anemic, but we are adding homes to our inventory on a daily basis new construction and pre-owned homes. And if you just can't find that right place, then maybe you wanna look into new construction because then you can pick your floor plan and do a lot of modifications that would just be tailor-made for you. But we are starting to see an increase on homes that are available. Myth number four, you need 20% down in order to buy a home. The truth, you can buy a home for as little as 3% down well, actually 0% down. If you're a veteran, you can buy a home with no down payment. Hey, you've earned it. You're a veteran, you've served our country, thank you. 0% down for you. If you are FHA borrower, as little as 3.5% down. In, in some cases, you can even get a conventional loan for 3% down. So that 20% down is almost a myth because we've developed and we've advanced so much from that particular rule that more people are able to now purchase and own a home because there's some flexibilities and some things that you could one point not do, but now you can today. So reach out to me and we can go over those later, but let's just say that's a pretty huge savings from having to put 20% down for down payment to only zero if you're a veteran or 3% for conventional. So that means you can spend some money on maybe furnishing your next place, but do not spend any money or open any line of credit until your home has been funded by your lender because that can wreck the whole deal. Affordability is a real issue. It can bring the strongest of people to their knees. It can be paralyzing. And we're talking affordability that crosses lines. We're not just talking about a house. It's difficult to afford a car, to afford a loaf of bread, to afford gas to get to the job. So you can purchase a home. I get that. I validate you and your concerns are true. But what we want to do is get you off of that roller coaster and it gets you on solid ground so you can make some intelligent decisions based on the facts so you'll know the best way for you to get to your next place. And to summarize things, interest rates are higher than they once were. If you're sitting on tons of cash, you've owned your home three years, in this market, if you owned your home two years, you have tons of equity. You've got a lot of power right there in your current home. I get it. Housing market, this thing with the mortgage rates and the price of the home, it's like on the roller coaster. And some of you have that firm grip of anxiety. You wanna move forward with your life, but you just don't know how to do it. But that's why I'm here. I wanna help you navigate all there is to know and provide you with all the options out there for you to make a really intelligent decision. Hey, if you are thinking about moving to your next place, 
and you're feeling a little anxiety about the whole thing. Yeah, your cortisol is off the chart. Let me visit with you. Do me a favor, comment below, call me, reach out. Let's connect, let's do a one-on-one -on -one so we can come up with an idea that help you take a deep breath even when you feel a little anxious to get you to your next place where you can create your new memories to call home.